Ezra chapter 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Now, according to Old Testament Bible scholar Frank Kidner, who lived from 1913 to 2008, we can read his input on this. He says, Cyrus made a decree giving the Jewish exiles in his empire the right to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple in 538 BC. As reports this in chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and chapter 5, verses 13 to 17. However, the greater part of this book, though it bears the name of Ezra, tells of the pioneers who came back from exile to Jerusalem a whole lifetime before him. For we do not meet Ezra till chapter 7. There are many Bible scholars and teachers that feel the prophet Daniel was instrumental in this by encouraging Cyrus to offer this option to the children of Israel. That's quite possible. Daniel was incredibly respected. He was a respected prophet in the land of Babylon by these kings. Every last one of them, heathen though they were, respected Daniel the prophet. His prophecies always came true because he spoke only those things which God said he should speak. So at this time in Cyrus's reign, Daniel, even though an aged prophet, would have been very much revered by Cyrus. I love what the author of Enduring Word wrote. Daniel may have shown the king the prophecies of Jeremiah chapter 25 and Jeremiah chapter 29, which refer to the punishment of Babylon and the end of Israel's exile. And if he showed Cyrus such prophecies, he almost certainly would have included Isaiah, which mentions Cyrus by name some 155 years before he was born. So let's read that passage in Isaiah, which was written 200 years before Cyrus was born. It's astounding prophecy. Another example of the detailed messages and prophecies all through God's word. Chapter 44 of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the babblers and derives diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers, who says to Jerusalem, you shall be inhabited, to the cities of Judah, you shall be built, and I will raise up her waste places. I will say to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up your rivers. I say of Cyprus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. Let's go to the historian Josephus, who, by the way, was no real big proponent for anything godly. He was kind of an agnostic Jew. But he wrote that Cyrus was partial to the children of Israel because he was mentioned by name, and his great rule was listed in this part of Isaiah, which is very plausible. We know for a fact from historical documentation that the Persian Babylonian monarchs paid close attention to the prophecies of all belief systems, the Greeks, the Egyptians. In fact, we know that Herod, when he was approached by the wise men from the east, was stunned at their following of the bright light in the sky foretelling of a child king who was to be born. He was so stunned that he had all the boys of a certain age put to death. We know Joseph was warned by God in a dream, and he took Mary and Jesus to Egypt, escaping the satanically inspired death of baby boys born in Bethlehem in that same time frame. The sentence that reads, Cyrus king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, is also found in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 22 to 23. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also put it in writing. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. Now, the word proclamation has a two-fold meaning. The first word, abar, is a verb. It means to pass over, by or through, to bring or carry. The other word, kol, is a masculine noun that means voice, 
sound, noise, sound of an instrument. In other words, Cyrus had this decree loudly proclaimed throughout his area of the monarchy. He had callers and criers walking in the streets, shouting out like the old-time English criers we think of. And the people would hear him. And when they heard him say, this is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says, you better believe everyone stopped what they were doing in their homes, on the streets, in their backyards, because a proclamation like that meant changes for everyone within listening distance were coming. And indeed, this proclamation was going to change the entire contour of Babylon and all who lived in it. And the beauty of this is this decree takes us right back to Ezra because Jewish tradition states that it was Ezra the scribe who wrote the book of Second Chronicles. Now, while the author remains anonymous, it was written around the time that Ezra probably had a hand in the part of that writing. So let's continue Ezra chapter 1 with verses 2 to 3. All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me, Cyrus says, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you, all of his people? His God be with him and let him go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the free will offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Now at the first reading, this sounds a little arrogant, but then I realized Cyrus was actually giving God all honor and glory. He was not doing the, I did this and I did that. He was saying, it is the Lord. He was calling out the name of the Lord God of heaven. In fact, Cyrus uses the title and name for God, Yahweh Elohim, or Jehovah Elohim. He's using the form of God's name that shows incredible respect and awe. This is the same name God used for himself in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made earth and heaven. And again, when God was removing Adam from the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, chapter 23, he says, So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. In this Hebrew name for God, the word Lord is capitalized because it stands for Yahweh. The word Lord is used as a short and abbreviation of God's name to show complete respect for him as creator. It is four letters that stand as an acronym for Yahweh. Elohim is the word for God, hence Lord God. In other words, Cyrus has written this decree to honor God and give him and only him all honor and glory. And that's significant because you've got to remember, Cyrus was still a heathen man. He still believed in his lesser gods, although he gave Almighty God all the honor and glory above the gods of his ancestors. But he never completely gave up his worship to those man-made idols. So to me, he's a very interesting person. We don't read anywhere that he ever fully converted to the belief of only Almighty God, the creator of all. But he knows that he has been given it all by Almighty God. And he knows this because he's foretold of it in the ancients that came from the children of Israel. So he's going to just go with the gravy boat here. But it's encouraging to me that the words of Isaiah, written 200 years prior, did not go void. As God tells us, his word never does. And because Isaiah never lost heart, never turned back, and never gave up encouraging others in Yahweh, we can have that same blessed promise and hope in Yahweh Elohim and the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach today in 2024.